Hi, welcome back to my blog, Edis English Literature. I am Ardhan today. Today we are going to read another war poem by Wilfred Owen. It is Anthem for the Doomed Youth. This particular war poem at once has the very beauty of the text. It is a romantic appeal as well as a trip pain, pathos or underneath sorrows that are flowing and blowing the very mind of the young ones who are in the war field and dying prematurely in the name of barbaric war. So the backdrop is First World War. The mind of the poet is invested with that of romanticism as well as the deep pathos or the pain that are underlying into the loss of words and the death which is looming large in front of them in the name of devastation in the name of cruelty and it is all possible or all made it so devastating in the name of world war so let's concentrate into the text i will analyze it line by line so let's proceed into the text when's anthem for doomed youth consists of two parts in the title word one is anthem another is doomed youth. Anthem may refer either a religious song meant to be sung in a church especially by a choir or any ceremonial song of praise. The context in which the poem has been written is no doubt that the poet used this particular word anthem in an ironical sense. That is, it may be a song of praise. But for where, but for whom this song is being sung? For doomed youth, the youth who are destined to die, the young persons, particularly soldiers, who are dying like that of cattle in the battlefield. Is there be any ceremonial song be sung for the death of the young one? So here the anthem, the very word is ironical and the doomed youth is the very snub on the reality of the world that what you are doing you the politicians you the society are doing you are doing the youths who have the every rights to live making their lives doomed and you are making anthem for them you are making a ceremonial song for praising their death so the very title is ironic Now, coming to the line by line explanation, just look at the poem. As it is a sonnet, we can have the two part distinctive part, octave and sestet. The Petrachan mode of this sonnet, the octave raises the tone, the poet's anger, and in the sister part, there is a kind of tenderness and pity. The rhyme scheme of the octave is A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D. And the sister part is E, F, F, E, G, G. So, even though the Petrachan form, but the stylistic part of this sonnet and its rhyme scheme is uh, a middle way between Petrachan and Shakespearean sonnet mode. Now, this particular poem is being written towards a violent protest against that of war. This group of Georgian poets, our poets, had a stamp of their own by putting a question on the reality of this world. Why? Why is this war? Why such death? Why such destruction? Wayne's poetry among them is greater as there is an appeal of romanticism as there is a notion of violent protest. There is a positive emotions. 
of love, compassion, admiration, joy that coexisted with that of so-called violent protests, horror, anger, disgust, negative emotions. So when is a beauty of expression and there is silent tears dropping from Owen's poetry as it is in this poem. So look at the lines. In the octave path, we see what passing bells for those who die as cattle. Only the monstrous angers of guns, only the shattering rifles, rapid rattle can batter out their hasty horizons. No mockeries now for them, no prayers nor bells, nor any voice of mourning, save the choirs. The shrill, demented quads of wailing cells and bugles calling for them from sad sires. So the octave part begins with a rhetorical question. The poet wants to know what bells are rung to pay honor to those who die in battle as cattle, the soldiers. The young people who are battling out in the war, the war which is invested upon them, which is thrust upon them in the name of politics, in the name of economy, they are dead. As they are dead, what should be the, their funeral ceremony? Poet asks this question to the common people, to the civilians, to the politicians, to the generals who are taking their distance from the actual scene, making a TV show, making a radio news, but on actual scene only the soldiers are dying. The uselessness, the worthlessness, this ridiculous war has put these young men dead. These young soldiers are courageous. The poet thinks they don't require no prayers, no bells, no voice of deep sorrow. Nothing is required for them because they are brave ones. Only two things can serve as their prayers. A respect. Cells making long shrill crying sound in mad manner and the bugles sounding for new recruitments that make the county sad. At that time of war, only a bugle sound has been sounded and the new recruits are made. It was war time. So these were the sounds that should be the perfect anthem for them, funeral song for them. By that sound, they were dragged into the war field. So the poet's voice is quite ironical protesting and it also suggests a deep and complicated situation of that war front. The young people who are dead in the name of war are being mockingly seen from distance. A shadow tears are not suffice. A real understanding of the situation is the required concept that when wishes to deliver in this part of octave. In the super tears time, a bell was used to frighten away evil spirits from human spirits as it was the departing from the body. But why is this sound required? The poet's anger and protest, his condemnation and the criticism of his countrymen who believe that only by arranging the ringing of church bells all over the country in memory of the young soldiers who die in overseas battle, they succeed in paying back all the debts for them. His unrepressible rage makes him think that such peacetime church bells are no tame and, and they are inadequate for the brave soldiers who put them into danger, into death, in thousand numbers. The society. So, the society should pay 
a fiercer and harsher cry than this melodic charge bell of ordinary things. The monstrous angers of the guns, the rapid rattle and the shuddering rifles. Those are the sounds that are the best mocking sound. A stamp and a snap to the society. That you have put these young soldiers dead by these sounds. So these sounds should be sounded as they depart into the other world. The destructive power of the modern world war has put everything into devastation. The young who had the full capability of living now dying as cattle. The poet wants to know what sounds will, ri will ring as charge bells for the young soldiers who die in huge lots in foreign battles. And he asks this question because the slow and melodic and regular beat of charge bells appeared to tame as if like a mocker. So the initial octave question in its maturity in the sister part. The voice of the morning that the poet expresses or wishes from his countrymen, from his government is like that of a fading cry. The shrill, demented quads of wailing cells and beetles calling for them from sad sides. These are the sounds which are made. In the when another poem, the send off, we can see how that soldiers are sent into the battlefields. There are sea of ceremonies, the beloved's mothers have come to see of their sons, see of their lovers. But the soldiers knew as they are going loaded full train, hardly they will return with such a clamor, with such a voice. That was the reality. In the sister part, the poet questions with the second one. What candles may be held to speed them all. The candles are lit on the charge, but only a little candle and letting it at the charge is suffice with the lamentation. If we really want to send these young soldiers some good wishes into their heavenly journey, this candle is Sufficient one? The poets question the very Christian rules. The very way we the society behave. Are the Christian rights are necessary for the purification of their souls? What is the worth of this Christianity when such Christianity cannot sustain the life of a young one who is battling out in the war and dying? nor in the hands of boy nor in their eyes shall shine the holy glimmers of goodbyes the pallets of girls brows shall be their pall their flowers the tenderness of patient mind and each slow dust a drawing down of blinds the pooper farewell to these dead soldiers would be a total blackout of the civilization. The morning should be there in the eyes, in the tears of the goodbyes, when in the beloved's eyes will be full with tears and his head will be covered with black clothes. The flowers that will be littered over there would be the flowers of every natural component who should mourn. Every 
cartons of the household family should put it down in memory in respect of these dead soldiers so the poet says there should be a total blackened atmosphere a deep underneath sorrow a sorrow that will be penetrating one reaching one that will be felt from heart not as custom so the poet's ultimate commentary is that the softly sorrowful scenes should be such that whatever rap kala street paint these young soldiers may deceive at the hands of their snug and in sincere countrymen they are never forgotten by their beloveds their patient friends and relatives that is the ironical message even the mother earth will never forget the word paul we find is a pun it at one means a friend mourner who is ready to show respect to the dead soldiers by pulling down their window blinds when i have succeeded in overcoming this by introducing subtlety the case of the task even the mother art is mourning in respect of the dead one and at once it means a black coat the quietness of tone may prevent us from noticing the absence of human the entire society even the civilization should mourn the passing away of these dead soldiers and that should be respected that should be appreciated because a real respect to the soldier is its recognition of the work he had done and the gloom and the pathos of loss that a soldier has gone through should be experienced by the civilized people or the society itself or rather make a protest towards this gloomy war or the devastation of this war that should mark another kind of respect to this soldier so the flowers that are required to the funeral service but this are the poet fancies that the tenderness visible in the faces of those who silently bear the grieving loss of the soldier who silently bear the grieving loss of the soldiers will as their flowers i have given you some uh, while uh, the discussions were made or analyzing this poem has been done to you the word meanings as well as its deeper connotations has been explained on the screen i think you should Uh, get all these points even though there is unseen some points you till battling out to read uh, kindly refer to me i will try to explain it in the comment section wilfred owen wrote in his preface to his volumes of war poems published in 1819 that above all i am not concerned with poetry my subject is war and the pity of war the poetry is in the pity by stating that he is not concerned with poetry when is obviously objecting to the aesthetic poetry that was written for poetry's sake when poetry had a purpose he had a vision when had a decided message and dedicated message his poetry which is about the pity of war it is in his message of the monstrosity of war where the lies of the world the barbaric and the, the workaholic people so called generals so called politicians are feasting on the innocence and them for doomed youth is one of the wins fast and most famous war poem written at Craiglock Hut in October 1970 this poem 
truly exhibits one's heart. This poem is an elegiac lamentation for the young men slaughtered as cattle in the name of war. These are barbaric sin, these are beyond comprehension and beyond the notions of nature. And that particular message has been delivered in this Wilfred Owen's poem, Anthem for the Tomb Tube. Like many of other poems of Wayne, the anthem walks through a series of contrasts. Here the contrasts are framed in questions followed by answers. The first question is, what passing bells for those who die as cattle? The poet inquires about the appropriate form of burial ceremony for those dead bodies that are huddled together in the battlefield. The answer is given from the ironical statement that the sound of battle is the appropriate sound of mourning. They function as a worthless laments. Only the monstrous angels of the guns, only the shattering rifles rapid rattle can put out their hasty horizon. In the sestets, he again speaks about the salient suffering and the silent suffering of the soldier's family and their soundlessness is depicted in the concluding lines. Again, for the second time, he puts for a word. He asks a question, what candles may be held? to speed them up into their journey to heaven. His answer is that tears gleaming in the mourner's eyes will be as candles held in the church by accolades. The pale faces of the men's sweethearts will be their funeral clothes and grapes, side flowers, the tender thoughts of those who have patiently waited for their returns are the appropriate burial appropriate mourning for these dead ones. Owen has the first-hand experience of the modern warfare and the brutality of war is well exposed in his poems. Here in this sonnet he points out that the monstrosity of war even negates Christian rituals. No better should be raised as prayer for the peace of the departed soul the patterned hasty auditions of church prayers are greater mockery of this sacrifice. Only the sounds of military metaphors, the shattering mechanical meaning, ironically, the fittest form of mourning for those rich victims of the battle is that. Thus, each funeral or memorial services is replaced booming guns for bells, repeated rifle shots for mechanically uttered prayers, wailing sails of chairs. It is better to acclaim their sorrows through military devices rather than of vain, rather than of artificial shedding of tears or gathering. The negation of this traditional ceremony in this poem stands as a form of lament for the soldiers lonely dead and for the fact that they are denied proper burial. The poem thus capturing that sense of lamentations and bitterness as we find in the octave part gradually turns into a mode of honoring or self in even in the matter of grief in the sestet part. Its strength lies in these images which are aptly chosen to suggest the horror of war the inadequacy of the religion and the validity of love and grief. It was a greater compassion and respect for human relationship than Owen's other poems which are more accurate in tone, which are derived by his war experiences and while he is staying at a clock hut. Owen's poetry might strike one as morbid, monotonous, and too painful without tragic relief or exaltation. But when the tragic vision is projected on the wider universal scale, it rises above mere satire into a 
simply for greater sensitivity to greater sensitiveness to and to a sympathetic understanding of human sufferings and them for doom truth is such an experience from war to peace cannot escape the reality that life is always entertaining if it is not blackened by death and the death which comes prematurely hurts most wilfred owens poem hurts us most because he is the jubilant youth he is his is the words that are making a play song of lovely and beautiful panorama of world that is the beauty of nature that infused our mind into that romantic ideology but at once it also reminds how drastic how devastating the war is snatching those lives into death into destruction so understanding will fit when is a kind of making our sorrows deep into the chasm of nothingness and will fit when this particular poem and then for the doomed youth as to our mind in sorrows as well as well as awaken our understanding of the reality and that reality is the destruction death and devastation caused by first world war so uh, we have uh, tried to understand this particular poem if you like if you have any questions regarding this you can pop up any questions and i will try my best to answer you thank you like share comment and don't forget to subscribe bye bye